Hello and welcome back to the fourth and final part of the Comparative and Omics Tools in Biopsych webinar series, Orthologue Viewing. I'm Alexander Scheer, speaking on behalf of the Bioinformatics Research Group at SRI International, and I'm going to tell you one final comparative feature that you can access on biopsych.org. In the first part of this webinar series, we showed you the cellular overview diagram, which you can access here from the query page. In the second part, we showed you the omics viewer, also accessible here, and for the third part, we showed you the comparative analysis, also accessible here. And during the comparative analysis, we saw a little bit of ortholog viewing across a whole organism. This time, we're going to focus on ortholog viewing at the single gene level. And to do that, we need to go to a single gene. So we're going to pick E. coli K12 as our organism. And we're going to query, and you may remember this from our introductory webinar. And we're going to query by gene. And I'm going to go with the example gene EDD and hit submit. Take it out of my three options there. EDD codes for the enzyme phosphogluconate dehydratase, which is a component of the entner deuteroff pathway. You may or may not be familiar with that, but we're just using this as a convenient gene to show off gene-based ortholog viewing. So if you're on any given gene page in a biopsych database, you want to just click down to where you see Align in Multigenome Browser and Select Allowed Organisms. These two buttons will let you access ortholog viewing based on this gene. So if you're on a given gene, like we are now on EDD, and you'd like to know its orthologs in a number of potential organisms, you can click through that way. We also have some of these canned ortholog links up here, but that's not all you're limited to. These are just ones we think people will be interested in right off the bat. So to use the ortholog viewer, First, let's go to Select Allowed Organisms and click on this button. And now we have a set of organisms. So this may be familiar. It looks a lot like the comparative table that we saw in part three of this webinar series. So let's select a bunch of organisms. And an important caution here is you have to select your starting organism. We know you just came from E. coli K12, but that doesn't mean it's automatically selected. So down here, let's choose E. coli K12. Let's go with uh, 0157H7. Let's go with Francisella tularensis, which we were using in the comparative analysis before. Let's go with Yersinia pestis kim. And we want two more. So let's click up. Let's go with Neisseria meningitidis MC58. And up to the top of the page again, let's go with uh, Salmonella Typhimerium, and we want LT2. Okay, so now we've selected a bunch of organisms, a kind of eclectic mix, and we want to see, based on EDD and E. coli, what orthologs are present in these other organisms. And so these orthologs are not calculated on the fly. Uh, you can talk to us if you want a little more detail about how we generate them, but basically we've pre-calculated these orthologs for you. So now I'm just going to go ahead and hit Submit. And now we're back at the gene page, because all we did there was select the organisms we want to look at. And it's just a necessity of how this is set up that it's a two-step process. So now I click down again, and now I'm going to hit the button for Align in Multigenome Browser. And now the actual ortholog alignment will be done. And here we are at the ortholog viewer page. This may look familiar to you if you've played with a biopsych database before or if you watched the introductory webinar. This is basically an adaptation of our genome browser with a couple important differences. All the stuff at the top should look familiar. We have navigation that lets you zoom in, zoom out, and go left and go right over here. We have the usual indications of protein coding genes, RNA genes, transcription start sites, terminators. Uh, we let you go to specific genes you want to go to. Now as I scroll down, there's an important difference. And one of the big important difference is we've repurposed colors on genes. In our genome browser, colors indicate transcription unit identity. If four genes were in the same transcription unit, they were the same color. Transcription units also had these shaded indicators behind them that also showed transcription unit identity. Here, in the ortholog viewer, we've kept the shaded backing to indicate this is an operon but we've repurposed color to indicate orthologs. So as you can see, this is EDD, and these are its orthologs 
in three of the organisms we selected. And two of the organisms we selected had no orthologs. And we'll tell you that there were two without orthologs, and we'll tell you their names down at the bottom here. However, in those cases where an ortholog could be found, we've shown you that ortholog in its local context, and we've actually colored in the other genes that are also orthologs. And so here's something you can see at a glance, which is unsurprisingly, E. coli K12 looks locally a lot like uh, O157H7, which is basically what you'd expect since we're not in one of the pathogenicity regions. And you actually just have one gene there that did not come up as an ortholog. Uh, salmonella is a lot like E. coli, but with bigger chunks of difference, which is kind of what you'd expect. And Yersinia pestis, wildly different in the area. And so this is a nice at-a-glance view of whether or not, you know, syntony is maintained. Does the ortholog live with other orthologous genes? Does it not? Or in the case of, you know, a couple of the organisms, Francisella and Neisseria in this case, no ortholog. And of course, you could always see if other things were maintained locally, and it happens that this gene was knocked out by picking another gene nearby an E. coli and looking for its orthologs again. Now let's zoom in. And here we have a slightly closer look at what we're seeing. Just scroll down here. And you can watch again how Centenia is maintained here, and then stuff is just different over here. And it can also be interesting to look at things like, in the case of E. coli, we have experimentally defined transcription units. And down here in 0157, we have a predicted to you that actually includes things that we otherwise think are in separate to use in the organism here. And you can do similar comparisons of transcription units between different predicted organisms. And so as I mentioned, you know, maybe we want to see, well, we had our selected organisms. Maybe we were just in a gene that happened to drop out of Francisella and Neisseria. Well, how about we click over to a nearby gene. This is protease 2. Let's look at select allowed organisms again. And you'll notice that on the select allowed organisms page, our previous selections are still here. And we could add in a couple ones if we wanted to. We could add in Hahela chejuensis, which I suppose was found on Cheju Island. And we can add in Ashbia gassipi. And then go down to the bottom, hit submit. And again, we'll be bumped back to our gene page, PTRB in this case. And now we can click on a line in multigenome browser again. And here we are, back in the ortholog viewer. And we can see that none of our new selections had orthologs, which is not super shocking. They're fairly distant. And again, we can see this time that there are a lot more orthologs maintained, however, in Yersinia pestis around PTRB region. And so here's PTRB across these organisms. And we see actually now a lot of orthologs compared to the none that we had before when we were looking at EDD. And so this is interesting. You know, you can kind of see which different groups of genes have stayed together over evolutionary divergence and which ones haven't. You know, so you may want to ask, well, is there a reason why we have a flagellar protein, some kind of resistance protein, and a deaminase involved in glycine betaine degradation all sticking together with this protease. Is that a functional thing or is that just how it happened? So basically that's what you can do with the ortholog viewer. It puts you in this sort of genome browser-like view. You can zoom in, zoom out, navigate left, navigate right, and you get to see orthologs in their genome context in each organism that has that ortholog. So to summarize for this webinar series, we've shown you a couple ways that you can look at the whole organism, at large scale data sets, and how you can compare across organisms using the cellular overview, the cellular omics viewer, the comparative analysis tools, and this ortholog viewing tool. In an upcoming webinar, we'll look at additional tools that are currently available only in the desktop version, but which will eventually be on the web including omics viewing on the genome viewer, as well as the regulatory network viewer, which lets you look at the transcriptional regulatory network of your organism of interest, including looking at which things regulate other things, uh, making a customized mini regulatory network, and putting omics data onto that viewer, as well as cellular overview highlighting tools for organism comparison, which are sort of like the comparative genomics that we did in part three of this webinar series, but using the cellular overview to compare metabolic elements in different organisms. I hope you'll come back and enjoy more of these webinar series and learn more about BioPsych and the Pathway Tools software.
Thank you.